Today, the topic of our discussion is something called uh, Thevenin's theorem, a very basic topic of uh, network analysis and synthesis. So, it's basically a very important topic for AC, DC, any kind of network. So, let's uh, first discuss about the theorem. So, it states any network containing any active network containing uh, linear and bilateral elements can be replaced by an equivalent network containing only a voltage source, a resistance that is called the load resistance and another resistance that basically represents the total internal resistance of the circuit and all these three will be connected in series. So, see you may face whatever complex a circuit, that circuit can be changed into a circuit which looks like this. So, your task, task of calculation or rigor um, reduces in a large way. Now, for example, take this circuit. It contains a voltage source, two voltage sources, two resistances and three resistances basically. So, in this case, if I want to know what amount of current is passing through this particular resistance R, the point of our interest, or what amount of voltage is across this particular resistance. So, to know that, uh, if we, there are certain methods to calculate that. First of all, it's a very simple circuit, so you can basically apply KCL, KVL, any sort of basic uh, network analysis techniques and you can get a uh, pretty much standard result with a standard timing. But the thing is that, let's consider the different scenario. In that scenario, we have to know or we have to analyze what amount of current is flowing through this path or what amount of voltage is being uh, generated across this. Even we change the resistance RL, right? So, in these kind of scenarios, the rigor or uh, the whole task becomes much more complicated because for each instance, you have to calculate the whole dynamics of the circuit. Then only you can know what amount of voltage or current or what, what is the point of interest in this. So, to reduce that, I think this approach can be a very, very uh, much better aspect. This has got a much better aspect. Why? Because see, in this case, RL is completely isolated from the other parts of the circuit. In the circuit's energy, the main portion that represents circuit's energy is the voltage source that is being represented by this VTH. And the total internal resistance, that means how many, what are the alignments of these resistances, how they are going to behave, that is basically concised in a single resistance of RTH. And by the variation of RTH, you can vary the other parameters of the circuit. So, see in this case, RL is completely isolated. So, each time if you need to change any parameter of VTH and RTH, you can do that. And by doing that, you don't have to harm the value of RL in any way. So, that's the superior, superiority of this technique compared to the KCL and KVL. Now, um, before going to the deeper into this topic, we have to first concentrate on the basic three keywords. What are those keywords? One is called something called active. Next one is called linear. And third, there is a thing called bilateral. So, what does these things mean? Let's take an example. Before that, uh, first discuss what does it mean by active. Active means any element that basically supplies energy. A battery, a cell, a generator, anything which creates energy and supplies the energy into the circuit is called active element. Now, from this pers perspective, a resistance is not an active element. It cannot create energy. 
it can only dissipate energy. So the active part is sorted. Next is linear. So uh, let's discuss what is a linear element. A linear element is basically an element which follows the law of superposition. It's a very famous law. Now, uh, without going deeper into the detail with the theoretical aspect, let's take an example of a resistance and let's see how it behaves as a linear element compared to other elements which are not linear. Now, there is a resistance of, say for example, uh, 5 ohms. It's connected with a voltage source of 10 volts. Now, as the circuit is connected, there will be a flow of current through this resistance. Let's consider that as I. What is the value of I? Simple, by using Ohm's law, I is equal to uh, 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2 amperes. Now, if I change the value of this voltage source from 10 to 20 volts, the value of current in this case is equal to, let's consider it as I2, 20 by 5 is equal to 4 amperes, correct? Now what happens if I apply a voltage source of 20 plus 10, 30 volts in this circuit? I am applying a voltage source of 30 volts. Now the total current I3 is equal to 30 by 5 equal to 6 amps, which is nothing but the summation of the first current and the second current. So what is happening in this case, whenever I am applying a voltage source to a resistance, whenever I am applying that, see the total current the final current is basically the summation of each individual applications, 10 volts and 20 volts. So that is something, that is something that's called linearity. Now what is a non-linear element? For example, you consider a diode. In case of a diode, it completely changes its behavior by the change of voltages. So these kind of phenomena, these kind of simple mathematical phenomena does not happen in a diode. So diode is not a linear element. There is also another way of understanding the linearity. It's a very simple uh, by avoiding all these mathematical things. Just check the output characteristic of that particular element. If I consider the output characteristic of a resistance, it's just like this. With the increase increment of voltage, the current increases and the ratio of this increment remains. So let's consider this graph. This is the standard output of a resistance whose value is R. If I apply V voltage across the resistance, the output current is I. And if, if we increase the voltage, the current increases. And if we decrease the voltage, current decreases. And the whole thing happens in a linear manner. What does it mean? The VI characteristics, the output characteristic of the diode, of the resistance, I'm sorry, of the resistance is linear. So if you just check the output characteristic of any element and see that it follows a linear path, you can straightforward say it's a linear element. And in case of nonlinear element, you will always see the VI characteristic as a nonlinear graph. For example, again take the example of a diode. I think the VI characteristic somehow looks like this. So it's uh, you can see simply by observation, it's not a linear, not a linear characteristic. So that's how you can distinguish from a linear element to a nonlinear element. Now the last topic. There is something called bilateral. It's a very important topic. A bilateral element is an element which behaves irrespective of the application of the voltage, rather the irrespective of the polarity of the applied voltage. What does it mean? Let's again take the example of a resistance and diode. In case of resistance, if you change 
the voltage applied to the resistance current changes and if you don't apply the volt don't change the voltage applied across the resistance current does not change but just by changing the polarity of the voltage does not change the value of the current or the output waveform of the current it remains same what happens what changes is the direction of current with the change of direction of applied voltage the direction of applied cur uh, the direction of uh, current flow changes so that is something we may call as a bilateral element now what is an unilateral element an element which behaves completely different by changing the polarity of applied voltage in this case again diode c as you can see the diagram in this case the reverse bias there is something called the forward bias characteristic of a diode and something called the reverse bias characteristic whenever the diode is forward biased it acts more or less in a it acts as a short circuit whereas when a diode is applied with a reverse bias it behaves in a completely different manner it starts acting kind of like a open circuit so that's how by changing the polarity just the polarity of the voltage the whole characteristic or the whole dynamics of an element is being changed so these elements are called as unilateral element again uh, these uh, any any element which basically is made of semiconductor devices are you may consider as unilateral element so we'll go deeper into the theorem in the next session Thank you.